Hey everyone, Brian Kelly here. Welcome to another episode of the Cultivate Church Planning Podcast. I hope you've been enjoying the show, and I want to tell you about an opportunity to support church planting and church planters. Go to cgn.org, click on Donate. You'll see a drop down for church planting. I'm going to put the link in the show notes, but this is a great way to practically support the work of the ministry support church planting, support church planters. We're going to see that all those funds go right out onto the field. So just wanted to tell you about that opportunity. And now let's get into the episode. All right. Welcome to the Cultivate Church Planting Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Kelly, and I'm here with my very good friend, Pastor Josiah Hart of of West Church in uh, Bradenton, Florida, and which is where we are. We just went through a couple of hurricanes Josiah. We did. We did. <laughs> and we, li- we lived to tell the tale. <laughs> oh, the stress of two hurricanes. Not fun. Yeah. So I have uh, Josiah on the show um, because I've known him for 26 years. That is correct. Dang. When we were at Bible College together, Calvary Chapel Bible College in Marietta, California, um, we were both there. We were studying. We met our wives there. Yep. And uh, funny story, I, one semester, we were, I was playing soccer, I ruptured my spleen, and I was known as the spleen kid because they were praying for me at chapel and everything, and not everybody knew who I was. That's so true. Like, oh, yeah, you're the spleen kid. And uh, there were a few of my close friends that visited me in the hospital, and Josiah has a picture still. It's I like do. a Polaroid or something. They didn't have <laughs> digital cameras back then. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> of him, him visiting uh, me in the hospital. And, uh, you know, I've, maybe I'll try to find that and put it on the video. I'll send on the it video. to you. I have it. We're like little kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look like little kids. We don't look like little kids anymore, that's for no. sure. We're old and mature. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Josiah's on the show today talking about um, church planting, obviously, because they were with us in the very beginning here at this church plant. And specifically, we, we can talk about his role at the church, which is uh, a pastoral role, specifically assistant pastor, mm-hmm. and how that can help to have someone that you trust, that has your back, that's going to do uh, the work of the pastoral ministry is vital to church plants because a lot of these guys go out, they go out alone. Yeah. And I remember when we were in uh, New Zealand and we were coming back to the States, you and I talked on the phone and you're like, hey, are you going to do ch- plant a church? Are you going to go anywhere? Because you mm-hmm. were in Colorado at the that time. That is true. And uh, I was like, yeah. You know, as time went on, we, we said, yeah, we're going to go to uh, uh, Florida and plant a church and just below Tampa Bay is where we are. And you and Anya, your wife, um, moved down from Colorado to help us with the church plant. And we started that very first, uh, we started meeting on a beach, <laughs> church yep. on the beach. And we met there for six months. And that very first uh, Thursday night, um, you were there, Anya was there, uh, my brother and a few others were there. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Right. But why don't you tell us a little bit about your kind of history, ministry history, and yeah. then we'll talk about the church plant aspect of it. So um, after Bible college, Anya and I uh, went up to Montana where we kind of helped out with a youth group. So ministry for us, since we got married, since 18, have always been in kind of that supportive role um, in the background, setting up, tearing down. All the churches we've been involved with have been kind of young churches uh, that require a lot of work, a lot of setup, a lot of uh, time uh, spent in the building. Um, And we went off to the mission field for a couple of years. We were in Germany while you guys were in Uganda. Um, And Anya's from Germany. She is. Yep. And so that was a, a neat time of just kind of solidifying more of that uh, assistant pastor roles because in those two churches in Germany, that's the role I stepped into. So a lot more um, teaching and supporting the the lead pastor in their calling um, and learning to be there to cover their backs, to relieve some of the stress off of the church admin things, of Mm -hmm. running things, of making sure people were in their right spot so that the senior pastor or the lead pastor could concentrate on 
their teaching on what God had called them to do. Yeah. Um, and when, uh, through circumstances, Anya and I ended up coming back to the United States, um, being on the mission field, I really just kind of felt the Lord was moving us in a different direction, not really calling us to go into full-time ministry back in California. Um, but that because you're originally from California, correct? Yeah. And, and so when we came off the mission field, not having anything, we moved back in with my parents because we needed a, a base. And um, my older brother is in law enforcement and the doors kind of opened up for Anya and I to go get, well, I got hired on by LAPD. And so that opened a whole new uh, opportunity for a mission field with me being behind the badge. And so fast forward a few, I would say seven years, we ended up moving up to Colorado um, where I was hired on by the sheriff's office up there working in the background, kind of just doing ministry at a church and we came to the spot the kids were growing out of the house Le levi was in the air force luca was graduating from high school so we were coming into that empty nester stage and i felt personally uh the pastor behind the badge was kind of disappearing and <laughs> the police officer was coming more to the front so i was getting a little bit more jaded i i i just was getting a little bit more stressed out. Mm -hmm. I really didn't care about people as much. What were some of the, I mean, what were some of the challenges with that? Cause it's like for a lot of our listeners, you know, they're, they're working by vocational. So that's what you're actually to this day, you're still working by vocationally. Yeah. But in that type of a um, industry, um, cause you felt it was a ministry at first, but what were some of the biggest challenges would you say in working in law enforcement and being a pastor? I, you know, it's like the, you, you throw them on the ground and say, God loves you. <laughs> right. I mean, yes, but I, I think the, the calls, the, the things that we would see, the things that we dealt with, right. So yeah. a lot of domestics, a lot of, um, abuse, a lot of, uh, dealing with drug addicts, though, those are the people that walk through our church doors. Yeah. Um, but as a pastor, you, you have, a kindness, you have compassion, <laughs> you, you have a, a heart to minister to them yeah. and see them. But on the, on the road side, so like on the police side, I started to not give people the benefit of the doubt, oh, yeah. meaning you, got jaded you would come it. to me and you would say, Hey, I'm struggling. I want to, I want to get things right. And I'm like, yeah, you're lying. Yeah. And, yeah. And Cause you deal I, with it day in and day absolutely. out. People lying to you. People. Right. And yeah. so you're like, Oh, I've heard this line before. Yeah. Right. I've seen you. I've seen you. And so you, you didn't give them grace. You didn't give them yeah, the sense. mercy that, that the Lord would have shown them. Huh. That's gotta be a tough field. Cause I know a lot of pastors are chaplains mm -hmm. with the police department or sheriff's department. But to be in law enforcement and to be a pastor, it's, it's got to be a, a tough job. But you're, you're working for the sheriff's department here, but you're in a little bit of a different role. So. Correct. And when we moved down here, um, and that was kind of the roles that brought us down, was I didn't want to lose that pastor heart. Mm -hmm. And so we started to pray about, okay, how then can we get that back? So I went back to Bible college, pursued my bachelor's degree just to get my heart and mind back into mm, back in ministry ministry and focused um because i knew with the job at the police department i couldn't get into back into ministry and then that was the time that i reached out to you um and you guys were moving down here and so that kind of brought us down here well knowing that i needed to still work because we all know starting of a church mm -hmm. there's not a lot of money we don't know if people are going to show up i still remember the first day <laughs> that we got into this building uh -huh. and it was the first Sunday and we were all 10 of us going, <laughs> well, this might be the size of the church, right? Are people going to come? Exactly. And we got so excited when the cars started to come. I still feel that way every Sunday. I Same. mean, a lot of pastors out there will, feel, will, will relate. It's like, are, is anybody going to show up this week? Is this the week it's going to fail? Right? <laughs> Same, especially even after the hurricane, right? Oh, yeah, are are people still going to live in Florida? Um, but when we moved down here, um, I was willing to go work any job and, uh, the Lord hasn't moved me off that mission field of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still the pastor behind the badge. Um, but yes, in a different role because down here, the sheriff's office runs the courthouse. Um, and so we're bailiffs in the courthouse 
and um, that's where I'm at Monday through Friday. Um, so you still get to see all the dirt and the grime and the you know the I problems. I do, but on but on the uh, uh, the end side, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so, you're not having to directly deal no, with it. Yeah. No, and so you get to see the end results, more of a courtroom setting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a less stress on me, mm-hmm. um, a lot more time where I can stand back and just pray for the people because yeah. while I'm standing there passing paperwork, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm praying for them. And you've told me about a lot of opportunities you've had to minister, not just to the, the, the criminals that come in, but to the other people in law enforcement, Absolutely. the judges, even yeah. you have a good relationship with all yeah. the judges. So. The one, the one, uh, judge asked me, uh, what brought me down here? And I told them and they were like, what you you're a pastor? And I was like, yeah. So that, that threw them off. Um, they, they didn't expect that. No, it's funny what people expect when they think about a pastor. I think it's changing more and more, but I get the same thing because I have tattoos and everything and, (laughs) you know, just look like a regular person. Like, oh, you're a pastor. Right. What? Yeah. It's not that we don't act like pastors. It's that we don't fit the perception of what culture says is a pastor. Correct. And, and I think too, dealing with uh, I just had this conversation with one of my coworkers because um, we have another coworker who is very, I would say, with quotations, religious and very, uh, I don't know, condemning, very, very upfront, uh, very yeah. like, you know, like in your face kind of. Yeah. And just and just very rude. Oh. And they look to me and they go, well, don't you believe the same thing he does? <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, yes. Um, the the difference that I told them is that, you know, th- hey, we all have different things that that we have as as strong points that we we hold to that we stand firm on. They won't listen to him because of his stance. Yeah, I give them a listen ear, knowing that I I'm gonna be in the world. People are gonna yeah. talk differently than me. Yeah. Um, but they're willing to listen to me because I'm willing to sit with them. Yeah, yeah. And you're acting like a regular person. Absolutely. Respectful is what it is. Being respectful. Right. And I don't expect them to be holy because yeah. they're not. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, how can I expect yeah, exactly. someone from the world you're, to be? You're trying to, be to that. get people in the world to live to a standard that most Christians aren't even living up to. Correct. So it's kind of a defeats the purpose. You got to get Christ in their life first before you can expect the the results absolutely of holy living right and it's it's kindness it's it's love it's it's showing them respect and bringing them along that opens those doors for me to have those conversations when they're in a struggle yeah right that when we get through the hurricane they're going how are you staying patient and kind with people yeah and i could share the love of christ with them and you had a real opportunity to be patient and kind with people because you were in the hurricane shelter i was (laughs) <laughs> 12 hour shifts oh, locked man. in Overnight. with yeah locked in for 6 days with uh people. Yeah, <laughs> and for those that don't know, we had a we just had two big hurricanes and really I I could say windy would be an understatement. Very. And a lot of houses destroyed, damaged property um and so a lot of people were evacuated before the hurricanes and some people if they have means, they'll evacuate out of the city, out of the state even some of Correct. them. Correct. But a lot of people, you know, you talk about the homeless community and those, you know, that don't have the means to do to evacuate out will go to the schools uh, where homeless or not homeless, but uh, uh, evacuation shelters. And you ma- manage those. Correct. And, and we run the security at the school. Um, so they have staff that runs the check in and the checkout and, and putting people in their rooms or in the hallways. So um, the admin stuff, you're just a security. Correct. Did you have any uh, fights break out? In my shelter, I did not. The shelter I was in uh, was a medical shelter, so a lot of people that are on oxygen oh, and wheelchairs. Yeah. Um, They're not in the mood to fight. No, we. <laughs> but we had to call uh, the ambulance out a couple times. Uh, oh, yeah, for emergency. Yeah. Can they drive around in the middle of the storm? They so can. they can. Um, As the minute that the town goes on lockdown, so like right a few hours before the hurricane hits, the school goes into lockdown. And once we go into lockdown, no one technically can leave. I mean, I can't force someone to stay in the Mm. school. Um, If someone tries to leave, then you got to let them. I tell them. Go with the Lord. Um, I would not advise you to. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, and so, yeah, we, we kind of just man the doors and make sure that people aren't just run, running out. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Because law enforcement, EMS, all that stops. Like there's nothing. Yeah. Going. Out on the streets. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't. I remember them telling the evacuees, the zones that were called to evacuate, mandatory evacuation. You don't have to evacuate. It's a free country right. and a free state here in Florida. And some people are crazy. I, I read about a guy who stayed on his boat oh, in yeah. Tampa that was just like yeah. riding the waves. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and that he survived was a big thing. Yeah, so... Um, but so, you put your life in danger and you put other people's lives yeah. in danger from not listening That's to That's what that, they right? were saying is don't call the cops when you have a problem or the emergency services because we're not going to come out. Correct. And they tell you, is this true? I heard that they tell you to write your name and your social security number on your body so that they can identify you after that's, you get that is things that you could do to be <laughs> smart about it right um yeah yikes it's it's not fun going through those storms no okay back to church planning we have um so we started here about three and a half years ago we've been in this building almost three years we're praying about our next uh we're outgrowing it which is great we've got two services and uh I would say from a personal testimony standpoint, like you and Anya being here and you being the assistant pastor has been like game changing. Like we wouldn't have been, we wouldn't be where we are without you guys being here and without you being at the church. What would you say? So we've got listeners out there who are thinking about planting churches mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, I can do it by myself. I don't need anybody. It's just me and my wife. What advice would you give them as far as when it comes to having someone not just to help out, but like a real, um, because uh, you and I, are, I would say, are peers. Like we're a, someone who knows the ministry, who can fill in when you need teaching, all, the, all of the above. And not everybody can have that. I don't want to necessarily discourage our listeners from starting if you don't have that. But what would you say would be the value in, from your perspective in, in what you do at the church? I, I mean, I, I think it, there's a lot of value in, in the spot and the role that I'm in. Um, I would say if, if you don't have someone who right off the bat is saying, hey, I'm, I'm willing to come down, I'm willing to, to serve the Lord, I'm willing to step into that role, um, and you're looking for someone to fill that role, um, I would encourage someone to find someone who is, one, secured in their own calling, Yeah. right? That yeah. They, they know that I, I'm called to this spot Yeah. Um, and, and not and someone who's willing to support and raise your arm, right? So yeah. I don't feel threatened by your position in the mm -hmm. church, Yeah. right? You're the lead pastor. And you don't feel you're, like you're in competition at all. And I never not at have all. sensed that. And I don't you. feel like I'm less mm -hmm. yep. of a pastor in the church just because I'm not up there every Sunday. Yeah, and in fact, I would say... For a lot of our congregation members, especially with the men's ministry that Josiah oversees, they'll look to you as their pastor when it comes to life matters. And if they're calling someone, they're usually calling you. You have more of a relatable kind of uh, personality, I would say. Well, and that's highly important, right? Yeah. We're, we're both fulfilling a calling within the church and serving the people that God brings here. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's finding your role and then doing that to the glory of God. Yeah. And so I think it's valuable in that because there are times, and we both know that when on a Sunday morning, when you're ready to go teach on the Sunday and you've got, you know, Jane and John over here having family issues, yeah. your mind is on feeding the flock. Yeah. And but then that's you, a pastoral role that needs to fill that correct. problem. Yeah. So now if you're alone in this process, yeah. you've got to do both. Yeah. Right. And you've got to say, okay, John and Jane, you need to hang out. Mm -hmm. wait, I've got to do Sunday morning and then we'll yeah. talk. And it's just, it's, it's possible and it's doable and many do but it. By the time you get back, they're already divorced they left <laughs> or, you're, or you're exhausted. I mean, we, yeah. we know yeah, after yeah. a whole day of Sunday teaching, you're exhausted, you're yeah. tired, you're, you're, yeah. you're wanting to, because you've, you've studied for so long to get there, right? You've put the time and, and, and prayer into it. You want to love the people and be there for the people, but you've just talked for, 45 yeah. minutes to yeah. you don't have a lot more to give no. especially if you're doing multiple services it's people don't realize that it is a very very taxing um thing to do in in the pulpit correct i remember a, a mentor of mine back in the day when we were in uganda a guy named bob davis 
he uh, he likened it to um, you know digging a ditch for eight hours, you know doing two three services of teaching because it's just so not not necessarily physically straining although you are standing up there and you're kind of but it's mentally just draining right to have to pour all of it into you know each and every service and we're and we're teaching we're not teaching 20 minute you know sermonettes here we're doing 45 right sometimes nearly an hour messages so and and i think what i learned from you know my mentors over the years right men like steve mays pastor chuck Mm -hmm. um is is how how can i on a sunday morning uh, relieve some of that stress off your back so that you're able to come in and just do what God's called you to do on that Sunday. Yeah. Right now there's things that you and I on a Sunday morning, we, we both are, are doing chairs. We're both yeah, setting we're things up, right? Kinda. Um, but it's trying to take a lot of that stress to where the church knows, Hey, if there's an issue with the children's ministry or the nursery or the mm-hmm. coffee team, don't run to Brian, run to me. Yeah. Right. Yep. Because I want to relieve that from you. I want you to be able to concentrate. Maybe God has someone you need to speak to or, uh, you know, there's a change in the message that he wants to do with you on a Sunday. Yeah. Well, you don't need to be dealing with all the ins and outs of a Sunday morning. Yeah. And so that's helpful to have that. Right. And yeah. if and if it's not in a role of an assistant pastor, then having uh, at least servants, someone that can elders, that. Yeah. someone who could relieve that pressure from you is, and, is key. And here's a, some advice to senior pastors as well, or church planters that are leading these teams, <clears throat> is once you find that person, don't, don't micromanage. Like, yeah. don't, because it's defeating the purpose. If I have to go and try to do everything anyway, it's like, you know, you got to, and this is with ministry across the board, whether it's children's ministry or the usher team. Josiah, you, you manage a lot of those different ministries, security. We've just got a great uh, security team. We, I feel like our church is probably the most secure church in all of uh, the I United think so. States. <laughs> <laughs> At times I got to like sit, sit some of the security down, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, okay, that's a little much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we don't want to go into the detail too much, but um, we definitely are, uh, we're not um, we're not afraid of, uh, threats, no. internal or external. No, no not at all. <laughs> I, I feel quite safe Freedom. on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. So that we, um, that's going on, but to across the board to give that advice that I was saying is, um, let that, let those teams develop, let that, those ministries develop. And you've even been doing that, you know, with men's ministry and things like that. As the church grows, I mean, ideally, and we've talked about this, that you would be able to come full time in the ministry and that sort of thing. But especially now that you're bivocational, I'm pretty much the only um, uh, full time mm-hmm. staff member at the church still. And as the church grows, there's so many things that come into play, so many different groups and ministries, small groups and things like that, it is to make sure to let those leaders of those departments kind of take the the lead on it right within the vision of the overall church yeah but. it's a great discipling great great platform for them to let their wings you know flap and, yeah. and go right yeah um fly out of the nest little bird yeah uh josiah is also on the elder board so we have six on our elder board and um josiah is part of that group and you know just starting from the very beginning with guys you can trust that you know have your back that are going to be able to you know, a lot of churches will not have the mi- pastors or ministry leaders on the elder board at the same time. But I don't, I don't really feel like that's, I mean, it just depends on the people, I guess, that are part of it. But uh, yeah, pastoring. And I, I think, I mean, yes, we had the plus of, of knowing each other um, from, from Bible college and, and I would say had that that platform. But it was also, you know, that first year of, of being here is, is learning each other, learning mm-hmm. each other's, uh, mm-hmm. who we were in the ministry, Strengths who we weakness. were in yeah, the, exactly. in, in life and, um, uh, finding our way. I think, uh, you know, that's huge and that's important. Um, yeah. I, I didn't, uh, though we have, and I'm, I'm blessed to have that, right. That, that we have a friendship, that we have a, a good relationship. Um, you know, you might not have that, in Mm -hmm. in your Mm -hmm. your pastoral you know yeah family you you might just be co-workers and that's okay yeah i I think understanding that um 
you know, you have to find that role mm -hmm. um, and be okay and in that role and, and in that position and not expect more. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Because we've got, we've got a pretty good sized, <clears throat> um, we call it a, like a ministry leadership team. We've got right. a text group and everything. And they're just all kinds of different people from all kinds of different walks of life and friendship levels. And, and uh, I think that's a good point, Josiah. Is you're, not, you're not here. I mean, it's nice to have the friendships, but you're here to, to do a job. Right. And that's for the Lord and for the church. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think because, listen... I, Life has its stresses. Ministry has its stresses. Mm -hmm. We're, we, we need to have a relationship, so communication is key. Um, we need to have that open communication. Um, we need to pr be praying for each other. Um, we, but, but if I don't hang out with you every single night of the week or yeah. every weekend, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Like, yes, we hang out, right? We, we have uh, something that's really special, I think, in our team and what God's doing yeah. with West Church. Um, and not everyone on the outside looking in goes, Oh, I want that. That might not be the case, mm -hmm. but it's, it's important to realize that. And I've had this conversation with several people in the church who, who were like, Hey, I want to have more time with the pastor. Yeah, I want to have more yeah, time yeah. with you guys. And yeah. why and don't I, you text me back? Why aren't we hanging out? More, you, know, you know, I let them know like that we can't fulfill all of their needs, yeah. right? That, that can't happen. The expectation like, has to be set. Look, in the church to find other people. The yeah. pastors can't always be everything to everyone. Yeah, I remember. And, and I think that's important to also yeah. have solidified in your heart and your mind. Yeah, I remember on a previous episode, I can't remember who it was with, but we talked about being pastors being friends with the congregation members. And some pastors don't even like have any relationship right. with the church. And I don't think that's very <laughs> no. good either. I mean, it's like <laughs> they pop out on stage, right? give a dynamic message and then disappear. disappear and everybody loves them, but they, you know, they have no connection with the church. Mostly, I would say mostly bigger churches probably, but even smaller churches, I've known pastors that are like, they don't talk to anybody, right? which is kind of awkward. No, I, I mean, I think you need to have <laughs> communication. And I think you need to be friendly with, with people, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But you do have to be guarded because... Because with that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of that. Like, you need to have your, your time, right? Your yeah. life and your, your downtime yeah. uh, away from things. I mean, I, I, I do it with my sheriff's office. Like, I need to have time where I'm not a deputy, yeah. Right. That yeah. work is work and it stays at work. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, and I'm to not have bringing that, that home. Distinction. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. We're looking at this uh, church property. If God opens the doors, I mean, it would just be amazing. But on the property, there's a, a house, a vacant house. And someone was like, oh, look, it can be a parsonage for the pastor. You <laughs> yeah, can go no. live there. And I'm like, no way. Right? I'd, rather uh -uh. Live out, I'd rather live out in a tent somewhere I, I, than live in the I don't same need, property as the church building. I don't need to uh, <laughs> have someone know where I'm at at all times, right? But it's crazy. Like, it used to be that way back in the day. Like, Dick. churches had parsonage. And any time, some congregation member, if they needed anything at right. any time, they're Knocked at your door, the door. Banging on the door. Yep. I'm like, oh, man, that would drive me crazy. Maybe it's just my personality. Some... Some people may like that kind of thing, but uh, if and if that's you out there and you got an opportunity to have a parsonage on the church property, hey, hey, that's awesome. God bless you. I, I know you the church it. I grew up in actually had some properties, uh, like homes that they would allow their pastors to live in. So like uh -huh. my youth pastor lived across oh, the street, nice. yeah. and like they became like kind of a help and a support. I mean, we all know the the cost of living in California is crazy. Yeah. That's where I grew up, and yeah. so of course. Um, we also know being a pastor, you don't make tons of money. And uh -huh. so having, having that it, it it does nice. help, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a plus Especially to it. Especially church but, planners, if you can get an opportunity to have a, a house you know, thrown in with it, right. it's huge. That's massive. But, <laughs> you know, have a, have a nice, uh, I think I would have my storm shutters on my doors and windows all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is the storm shutter up? Oh, it's the, is it the hurricane? No. no. <laughs> I don't like you. John and Jill or whoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't like you. Unclean. Keep out. <laughs> it's funny, you would drive around before the storm, everybody has like plywood on their windows or storm shutters, and uh, a lot of them have spray paint on the yeah. plywood, you know, keep out, right. or I'll shoot. That was <laughs> yeah. down the road from us was one that said, I'll shoot, so looters beware. And it was nice after the storm, people, you started to see the kids playing again, and yeah. life coming back, it's, it's yeah. uh, you know, one thing to, to watch, but... 
slowly but surely. So as far as the assistant pastor, you may, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit as well. Um, this is a role that you're perfect in. I feel like it's great. But what are some of the other, like, does someone have to stay an assistant pastor if they're working in that role as a church? Because I know you've talked to me about, and we've both talked about starting the Calvary Chapel Bible College campus, and you have a real heart for um, Bible college education, overseeing something like that. I mean, what's the what's the word to those guys who are like, ah, I, I can do the assistant pastor, and I think it's a calling, but does it have to be permanent? Like, can you become a, a senior pastor? Can you become a worship leader? Can you become a Bible college president? What's the, what's the word? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think the assistant pastor, it's a title. Um, I'm a pastor. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, yeah. and I think as, <clears throat> as you live and you, you serve the Lord and the Lord puts desires in your heart, yeah. I mean, if, if the Lord were to open the door and say, you know, hey, I want you to be a, a lead pastor— I'm going to answer the calling of God that he puts on my life. Uh, I think you need to, to make that call and election short, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yes, I, you step into different roles and you, you, you raise people up to take on that role. It's an, a very important role in the church. And I think that's one of the things that people need to understand, right? Because I think we have this mindset that if I'm you know, I have to be the lead pastor in order to be somebody. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I, I, yeah. that's not the truth. And like, I think not, yeah. you need to be, you, I, I am fulfilled and satisfied in the role that I'm fulfilling because I know it's necessary. I, I, I know it's a necessary role yeah. and I don't have to climb the ladder in order to feel like I am somebody. Yeah. Right? And I and think that's the calling that you've been convinced of. Correct. Yeah. No, that, that ladder, whole ladder thing is so bad, I think, because it, it happens, especially in big churches, because you and I have both worked in, yep. in big, church, big Calvary Chapel churches. And uh, you see these guys, you know, they start off in the junior high pastor. Yep. You know, they get to be a pastor, the junior high right, pastor. the Calvary way. <laughs> yeah, and then you, then you work there for a little while, you do your time, then you get to be the high school pastor. You know, there's more kids and more responsibility. And then you work there for a while, and then you get to graduate, and you get to be maybe the... College the, of career the pastor. The college of career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's even more. Right. Or, or the small groups yeah. pastor. Man, that's, you know, or, you know, and then you work there, and if some one day you can maybe become the you know, assistant or one of the associate pastors right. and assistant. And then finally the Holy Grail is right. I get to be the senior pastor. Somewhere. Correct. Now I've got the power, right? <laughs> and, but, but I, I think you need to in ministry, I think any of us, right. We, we need to be open to having the Lord direct our steps yeah. and, and being willing to also step into different roles yeah. and not, and not be like, Oh no, I'm not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so, yes, I, I think over the years, those those positions do move. And I, I think the the neat thing is to have a, a senior pastor who's willing to um, push his people out. Mm-hmm. Right. And not oh, hold yeah. on to yeah, them, because yeah, yeah, I think good. a lot of times um, I've seen it in, in my years of ministry, being in these positions on the on the lower end of things. Right. Yeah. Um, watching seeing guys who had the talent and the giftings to be yeah. lead pastors and to yeah. go out and have the desire in the heart to go and plant a church. But the, the pastor, the lead pastor didn't want to lose them. Yeah. And so yeah. kind of, That's a big kind one. of quenched the, the, mm-hmm. and, and pulled the brakes because it would have meant there would be a hole in the church. And, and I think, man, we've got to be willing to let God fill those holes mm-hmm. and to send people out. Yeah. And, and that might mean sending out the best or sending mm-hmm. out these guys, knowing that they're going to be answering the call that yeah. God's got and reaching different people. And he's going to fill that hole. Yeah. Right. And it's not even the senior pastors aren't doing it just because of they're afraid to lose that essential member or that the hole that will be there vacated when they leave. But a, a lot of times what I've seen is, especially if they want to plant somewhere kind of uh, close by, is a sense of, oh, people might like them more than me. They're right. going to go to their church. Or they're going to take people with them. And I think the sense of insecurity that a lot of us senior pastors have will contribute to that not willing not willing to support and send out. And thankfully, I had kind of the opposite with, because I worked with 
Pastor Ray Bentley at Maranatha Chapel, and he was just very, very supportive, and the, you know, the whole way. A lot of a lot of these, I've heard horror stories of guys w- working at a church, pastoring at a church, not as the lead pastor, but like you're talking about, they want to go out. And then the pastor just kind of uh, says, all right, if you want to go, then go. And then they just right. get rid of them, like forget about them. Correct. And I, I think, again, it's like hard feelings, kind of open communication yeah. with with your pastor. So if if something's on your heart as the assistant or as someone in the church, you know, having that open communication with the lead pastor to be able to go and say, hey, I. I'm feeling this. I think the Lord might be putting this on my heart. Could you pray about it? Could yeah. you see that? And know that it's they're going to receive that and pray with you genuinely. Like, because let's be honest, take us. If you were to say, hey, I got this opportunity to go and, you know, lead pastor or oversee a Bible, whatever it is, that would, that would suck for lack of a better word. Right. <laughs> for us, because of the job that you, but I know just from my experience and from the biblical teaching that we, we, we all know that God's going to fill in the hole. So my brother, take my brother, for example, it, we, he was the worship leader. He started out here and he was here for a year and just amazing worship leader really helped, not just with worship, but you know, he was a, a pastor in a sense too, Absolutely. like filling in that role and counseling and yeah. helping and building and all the rest. So that when he left, it, w- it, it was, a we had a lack. It was, we were missing something. Right. That's with anybody valuable that you miss when they go. But what happened? God provided not just one worship leader, but now we have like five or six. A team. Yeah, yeah, we have like multiple teams for our small church. So it was really a confirmation to say, you know, if you are willing to get behind this and, and to give and to send, God's going to fill in that, that gap. Yeah. Even abundantly more than you had. Right. And I think, too, with that, you know, being satisfied in the ministry, finding fulfillment in serving God where you're at, not always looking for something better. Um, the grass is never greener I on know. the other yeah, side. And we, we, can, we can hit hard times, right? Uh, I mean, honestly, after the last two hurricanes, normally we have a hurricane and it comes and then we have a downtime and you can breathe. This one really felt, and, yeah. and those from California or if you've ever been in the ocean and you've surfed and you've gotten knocked down from the wave and then you, you get tumbled in the uh-huh. whitewash, right? And you come back up and then the next wave comes and knocks Boom. you down yeah, and right you didn't away. even get a breath. This is how this one was. Yeah. And, and so you, you have moments in life that are stressful. You have moments in life that are hard. You have moments in the ministry that are hard. And a lot of times when, when those times come in the ministry, we, we tend to say, okay, God's moving us. Yeah. I, I can't handle this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And <laughs> even if we don't say it, we're all thinking it. Okay, right. this like, is it. Like, I I'm can't. T- I'm I, sick of hurricanes. Why did I move to Florida, right? <laughs> I'm thankful that I didn't know anything about hurricanes and I was yeah, a dummy exactly. to hurricanes. Um, uh, I, I will take a hurricane over an earthquake yeah. just because I could prepare this for the hurricane. This is getting too real. <laughs> but I, I would say, though, in that moment is saying, no, I, I, I'm okay, yeah. right? I think a lot of times... And as an assistant, right, you look and you're like, oh, I want to do more. And so I, you could get jaded. You could get upset. You could go, well, why am I not able to do things? Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's checking that, right? I think it's checking the balance of like, okay, hey, where can I find that fulfillment? Um, yeah. How yeah. can I also grow in my gifts as teaching? If I'm not up on a Sunday morning mm-hmm teaching and I'm just doing administrative pastoral yeah, things that yeah. are important. Where are those outs that we're also learning and growing? Right. Yep. And we've, we've created that when church on the beach, I've now had the, the opportunity right, to teach, <laughs> um, Bible college, men's ministry. Like you, yeah, you yeah. find that in other areas so yeah. that you are giving, not just you want to be working in the gifting that God has given absolutely. you. And if you're not using, the, you know, the Bible says stir up the gifts that that's within you. So you need to, even when I worked at, I worked at Maranatha and I, you know, Pastor Ray, I said, I just love teaching. I need to have an outlet for teaching. So he said, why don't you do Sunday night? It's a small Bible study kind of thing. And that was perfect because it, I was able to do that. It was extra time for me to do because I didn't have to do it, but right. I was allowed to do that and able to use that gift. And I, I think having, having that, right. So, so we, we talk about that. There's a, there's a lot of people that come into our church 
Um, they're, they're part of the fellowship. They, they join us. And then they say, I want to teach. Mm-hmm. Or they say, I want to be on the worship team. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and right they, they want to skip the serving part. And, and we've talked about that. I love how uh, I've grown up in Calvary. I love, in that sense, the Calvary way of doing things, right? It, is, uh, I'm glad you have gone to school and you've, you've got a degree and you can hang that on your wall. That's great, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to be finishing school. I'm going to hang a, a, a piece of paper behind mm-hmm. me in, in an office that says, Josiah has a master's degree. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. I mean, I remember Pastor Chuck back in the day. It's, it's just a piece of paper. Right. <laughs> yeah. Letters um, of recommendation. And and that's great. But if if I don't know how to serve, yeah. then then I, I, I'm not going to be able to serve at that level. And so it's yes, I, I want you know, you want opportunities to teach, but you also have to be willing to put the time in and, yeah. and serve the people and 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 minister and grow mm-hmm. into that position. Right. Yeah, um, it's I all can't about just, motivation. Like, why, are you, why do you want to do that? Why are you here? Why? Because we've had that here, especially with the worship ministry. Because yeah. whenever you're dealing with the public on stage kind of ministry, you're going to get um, the motivation of I want people to see me. I want to be in that position, kind of thing. And you got to really be careful for that. Yeah, and so, that's why that's one of the things you actually do really well, um, Josiah, is to to kind of monitor that and to to keep watch on what's going on within the church. I mean, I think being in law enforcement has helped me kind of be a little bit more observant Mm -hmm. on on kind of reading the room and uh, (laughs) watching people. Um, You know, that's been a definite plus um, in that. Um, I do that every day in the courtroom, right? Exactly, and, yeah, you're, uh, you're practiced at it. You, you see things and you, you make sure that things are running smoothly and accurately so that uh, the, the start of a court procedure can happen and we can get on time and we move people on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it has to happen. There's, a, there's the business side of the church that still needs to be ran and, it, and without that, it, it, we're, gonna, we're gonna fail, right? We're not yeah. gonna be able to, to do it. So it's, it's finding that fulfillment in that role and, and doing it. So yes, I mean, full circle, the position of an assistant pastor, having people on staff to help you uh, carry on the ministry is huge because life and people, they have issues, <laughs> right? Um, and they yeah. come in and they and don't... And senior pastors have issues too. You know, you gotta, you're like a, a all things to all men kind of, kind of guy here at the church. So. But it's, 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 the important role of just trying to take some of that weight off of your shoulders, right? Mm-hmm. Trying to take some of that uh, servanthood and discipleship off of your shoulders so that you're able to minister to people. And and both you and I, I, I might be able to communicate better to someone than mm-hmm. you and vice versa, right? Yeah. Um, and that's huge. Yeah, we're almost done here. But one more thing um, really quick is that I feel like... Um, Lately, especially with the younger guys, younger generation going out and plant churches, there's there's been such an emphasis on, um, and I, I don't want to get into like uh, church governance style or anything like that, but you know, typically in Calvary Chapel, it's always been kind of the Moses model where Moses was there and then he had the elders to help him and the assistants to fulfill God's calling that it put on his life. And we've all seen the the abuse of that kind of thing. And we've also seen a kind of a reaction, a reactionary that thing where guys are like, we don't really have a senior pastor. We're just all the same and we all make decisions and we all do things together. And I think there's got to be some balance in the middle. And what I appreciate about, about you, Josiah, and guys like you in this assistant pastor role is I think there, what I'm trying to say is within these young guys, there's a lack of men who are going to step up and say, I don't need to be the senior pastor. I believe God is calling me to be an assistant Um, not just to the senior pastor, but to the church. Like, this is my role and calling. And I feel like a lot of times these guys are going out and they're all, you know, they, they, they're all, um, uh, they're all senior pastors. Like I I was joking with another friend of mine, you know, co-senior pastors. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's not the husband and wife, you know, that's typical, you know, that kind of thing in the other denominations. But I think there's a lack of guys willing to go out and say, I don't need to be the guy seen all the time. I don't need to be the guy recognized all the time. I just want to be the, the assistant to make sure that God's work is continuing at this church. 100%. Yeah. And, and I think that comes with us as pastors 
when we're at conferences, when we're at our churches, to encourage and to recognize and to say thank you, Mm -hmm. uh, to appreciate the people around you, to say, hey, thank you for the job that you're doing. It's important, right? I think sometimes when, when you have people who feel like they're overlooked, they tend to say, forget it. I want to be looked at. Yeah. And then they run off and start their own thing. Right. And when we can pour into it and because I, I, I don't feel unappreciated here, Mm -hmm. not from you, not from the elders, not from the church. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. But there's a lot of people that do. I know that people in that role, that assistant pastor role, it's, it's, you know, even if they're not trying to get, climb the ladder to get to the top of the senior pastor role, they get underappreciated, undervalued, and well, unseen. Right. And we all want to be appreciated. I mean, yeah, that's true. Take me outside of this as a deputy. Mm-hmm. I want to be appreciated for what I'm doing. And when I'm not, mm-hmm. then the disgruntal, then, then the, oh, I'm going to leave this job. Then, yeah. I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been we've there. We've all been there. And I think Real it's talk. important for us as leaders um, to pour into the people that we have around us and to say, hey, we appreciate you and we thank you. And that's from pastors to, to the, the coffee ministry, to the children's ministry, to yeah. our ushers, that yeah. they don't feel overlooked. Yeah, especially children's ministry. Man, they, for the, you know, a lot of people don't realize what goes on in the, it's, a, it's another church. It's a whole ministry right. that you're dealing with kids. And a simple and, thank you. Yeah. And a simple, hey, I appreciate you. A gift you, card, a Starbucks huge. gift card, well, or anything like that. I mean, like... I know we're coming to an end, but when we did our appreciation luncheon mm-hmm. for, our, for, for the people that served, yep. the, the amount of gratitude and the amount of people that c- came afterwards and said, okay, where can I help? Yeah. It boosts. We need to do it, that again. It boosts them, right? <laughs> we do. Um, it's so important, though. Yeah, I saying know. thank you goes a long way, right? Yeah. Letting people know, yeah. hey, you're important, and I I think that's a good thing for at least for also people who are maybe praying about where do I fit in as in my calling and 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 yeah. role is hey, being an assistant pastor is needed within the church. Yeah, um, I had uh, one at one of the huddles. Someone, one of the pastors, came up to me and said, "Don't quit what you're doing." Mm-hmm. That's huge, yep. right? Because, yeah, you feel sometimes like, mm-hmm. oh, am I doing enough? Or this yeah. isn't enough. It's not I want as more. important as it could be. Yeah. And then getting encouraged in that to continue, like, mm-hmm. it is so important. It is so important. Well, Josiah, I've been good chatting with you. Appreciate you, um, you. as you know. <laughs> and uh, thanks for being you. Thanks for your service at the Sheriff's Department. And hopefully one day, um, you know, we can be... At the church all the time, doing oh, all this stuff. Awesome. Living, uh, living in the parsonage. Hey, you know, <laughs> if, 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 if that's where we need to be. <laughs> but just know I'm, I'm going to be guarded. <laughs> yeah, the shutters will be up. Storm shutters are up. All right, man. Thanks again for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. The Cultivate Church Planning Podcast is part of CGN Media, a podcast network that points to Christ. Check out cgnmedia.org for more great shows and ways to support the ministry.